I just want to be entertained. I mean, isn't that the point? <laughs> anyway. You know, there used to be a time where people sat there in darkened theaters and thought to themselves, oh, what have George and Ira Gershwin got for us tonight? <laughs> or, um, can Cole Porter pull it off again? Can you imagine? Now it's, please, Elton John, must we continue this charade? <laughs> <laughs> it used to be, sitting there in the dark, you knew that when the show began, you would be taken to another world. A world full of color and music and glamour. And you thought to yourself, my god, when are they going to bring up the lights? <laughs> <laughs> oh, things have changed. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How are we today? Fine. I'm feeling a little blue myself. You know, a little anxious for no particular reason. A little sad that I should feel anxious at this age. You know, a little self-conscious anxiety resulting in some non-specific sadness. <laughs> That's thing that I call blue. Anyways, whenever I'm feeling this way, blue, I like to listen to my music. So, uh, I was going through my records this morning. Yes, records. <laughs> and I was about to put on the soundtrack recording of Meredith Wilson's The Music Man. Oh, I had a great interview on Randy Howard. <laughs> <laughs> but then I said, no, let's have a treat. Let's disappear for a while into the decadent world of the 1920s. When the champagne flowed, while the caviar chilled, and all the world was a party. For the wealthy, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, I dug it up, and what did I find? One of my favorite shows, Gable and Stein's The Drowsy Chaperone. Oh Remember? <laughs> <laughs> Using my Julie Gable lyrics by Sidney Stein. It's a two record set, remastered from the original recording made in 1928. It's the full show with the original cast, including Beatrice Stockwell as the chaperone. Isn't she elegant? <laughs> <laughs> and that was a full 15 years before she became Dame Beatrice Stockwell. Can you believe it? Here, let me read to you what it says on the back. <laughs> it says, mix-ups, mayhem, and a gay wedding. Of course, the phrase gay wedding has a different meaning now. <laughs> Back then, it just meant fun, and that is exactly what the show is. It's fun. So, would you, would you indulge me? Would you let me play the record for you now? Yes! yes. I was hoping to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's the sound of a time machine starting up. <laughs> Going up, 
<laughs> Alright, I'll lead you through this record as best I can. Don't worry, it won't be hard to follow. So, we begin with a welcome from the Lustra Room. Oh. <laughs> well, I just wanted to thank you all for coming. I tell you, I must be some lucky fellow. Why, who would have thought that I, Robert Martin, <laughs> would be marrying a glamorous showgirl? Oh, that that glamorous showgirl would be willing to give up a successful career for me. Robert Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say, let's raise a glass hear, hear. to Miss Janet Van de Graaff, the most beautiful girl in the world. Absolutely not true. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> the crew mustn't see this bride on the day of the wedding. It's bad luck. <laughs> I hope you heard that, because that's the plot. <laughs> Face. Hey, ball for the ride. <clears throat> Breakfast shall be served in the Arabian room. <laughs> Say, it's a little early in the day to be drinking, isn't it? I don't understand the question. <laughs> you keep Janet away from Robert. You understand? You're the chaperone. That's your only job. Aye, aye, Mom. Um, Captain. Oh, Robert. <laughs> Who's my little funny bunny? I am. I am your little funny bunny. <laughs> The bride and groom are whisked away, and we turn our attention to the beat part, which involves the producer. Mr. Felton! Getting married and leaving show business! Mr. Felton! Doesn't she know I got obligations? Mr. Felton! I can be a leading lady! You said it yourself! I'm useless in the chorus! <laughs> <laughs> construct a stupid woman and her long-suffering companion. Well, she appears stupid, but in the end she does something clever and makes everyone wonder whether it's all just an act. The irony here is that Sadie actually was quite stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Jack had to explain all the jokes to her, apparently. But still, she had a wonderful career on stage. At that time, the theater was the only place where stupid people could earn a decent living. <laughs> Oh, that was before television. <laughs> Kitty, I don't have time for this. A pretty poor Mr. Fleddy Zig. Not now. Perhaps a nice profit roll. Boys, I'm not hungry. Then perhaps we can give you something else to chew on. Yeah, something that ain't food. What? Your confusion is to be expected. Although we stand here before you in the guise of innocent pastry chefs, we are also, and primarily, employees of a certain individual. A certain individual? A certain individual. <laughs> who happens to be the largest single investor in Feli Zeke's Frollies. He has sent us here, as pastry chefs, to uh, express his concern about Miss Van de Graaff's impending nuptials. Specifically, that if she gets married and leaves the show, then, then there, there ain't no show. Say! Don't I know you? No, you don't. <laughs> Have you ever spent any time in Toledo? Have you ever spent any time in a coma? <laughs> Ha, <laughs> 
We're on the lamb. Lamb's an entree, you macaroon. <laughs> Gangsters were played by the interchangeable vaudeville duo, the Tall Brothers. John and Peter Tall. Well, they were born Abram and Mindelmus Sloskovich, but were renamed at Ellis Island by a very sarcastic immigration official. They were an early example of the typical Broadway gangster, full of wordplay, stylized movements, not very intimidating. Unless you find gangsters intimidating. <laughs> Which I do, but for reasons that would not be appropriate to this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave the matter in your hands, Mr. Fleddle's egg. In the meantime, feel free to browse the dessert carousel. Try the Toledo surprise. <laughs> it's to die for. <laughs>
I do. 
Thank you. Thank you, life. God, it's like a cell phone ringing at a theater. I, I hate that. <laughs> Hello, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just at the theater ruining the moment. What about you? <laughs> no, I couldn't get out tonight, so I thought I'd ruin the moment by proxy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, let's just shake that off. Let's go back in our minds to 1928. They didn't have cell phones in 1928. Although I'm sure they had something for the ruining of moments. Like bugles or something. <laughs> Happy wedding Oh. Uh -huh. 
I miss something? Well, Mr. Field Pig, it's painfully obvious that Miss Vandegraaff has no desire to continue a life on the stage. Can't you see? <clears throat> Don't worry, boys. This isn't over yet. Yeah! I'm surprised you didn't do an encore! <laughs> <laughs> What? What kind of women is this? 
Like, <laughs> women. No, a bird of women. She's the cat's pajamas. Pajamas? <laughs> She's a looker, an attractive woman. Ah, show me to this cat in pajamas. That's <laughs> will make her boom. Oh, it's like a cat in pajamas. <laughs> 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 Roman Bartelli chewing the scenery. <laughs> you certainly couldn't get away with a performance like that nowadays, could you? <laughs> Mature contemporary audiences are too sophisticated to enjoy such broad racial stereotypes on the stage, so we banished them to Disney. <laughs> Let the children sort it out. <laughs> This is the only time in the show that 
Jane Roberts and Beatrice Stockwell are alone together on stage. Now, Jane Roberts was an emerging star, but Beatrice Stockwell was already well established and a force to contend with. I'm so full of apprehension, but I suppose that's normal, considering the circumstances. Have you ever been married, Chaperone? No. I drink for pleasure. <laughs> Not out of necessity. <laughs> Your ice water, madam. <laughs> Afraid that we are fresh out of olives. Have you ever been married, underling? Heavens no, madam. If I am Sir Moon, I'd prefer to be paid for my efforts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you two. I know it seems crazy to give up a successful career to marry a man I hardly know. But somehow, for some reason, when I look into his eyes, his big, funny eyes, oh gee, I get all woozy. And that's love, isn't it? Not necessarily. <laughs> the wooziness could be caused by any number of things. I mean, I'm woozy right now, and I'm certainly not in love. Beatrice Tafu was famous for her rousing anthems. She entertained and inspired troops in every major world conflict, up to and including the Falklands War. Uh, of course, by that time she was in her late 80s, and her anthems didn't so much rouse as stupefy. <laughs> but still, she demanded that a rousing anthem be included in every show she ever did, even if it wasn't appropriate. But you just couldn't say no to her. That's, that's star power. Really? You're not being the least bit helpful? Couldn't you at least allay my fears with a few choice words of inspiration? Inspiration? Really, dear, that's not my force. Yes, but if you... Come <laughs> on. 
does her own thing when she does, regardless of needs or concerns of others. My mother was like that. <laughs> Let me 
Our dog will make an announcement. The wedding is on. What? Come on, come on! <laughs> Our dog has made love to the bride. Ew! <laughs> That's not the bride, you idiot! That's the chaperone! What? The wedding is on! The wedding is on! What? Robert kissed a French girl. Her name is Mimi. She's very beautiful. <laughs> She was just like you, only French. <laughs> <laughs>
I have a bit of a blood sugar issue. <laughs> I eat small meals all day long, or I get chicken. <laughs> 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 I know it's rude, I'm sorry, but you wouldn't like the alternative. Believe you me. Believe you me. I, I remember my wedding day. I didn't eat breakfast, and the ceremony wasn't until 4 in the afternoon. But I do, I do. Are you surprised that I was married? <laughs> well, there you are. Huh? Should you go around making assumptions about people, should you? I'm a very complicated person.
thing I love about musicals in general is when a character is in crisis, they sing and they dance, which is so much more interesting than just whining about it. <laughs> but that's the glory of musical theater. Oh. oh, you see, this is what I'm talking about. This is real life. You manage to be happy for five seconds, and then something starts singing. I'm going to stop this here because I don't want this number ruined by a ringing telephone. So here we have a vaudeville duo who have slipped through the cracks of time. Noel Fitzpatrick and Ukulele Lil. I don't know anything about them. I suppose that Ukulele Lil plays the ukulele, <laughs> although she does anything in the show. I actually tried finding out more about her. I went through all my books. I even tried the, uh, the internet. And all of my research has ended with Tiny Tim's autopsy photographs. <laughs> and anyways, they're all very charming. Why would we have the pews removed? The bride has called off the wedding, then. Oh, underling, never listen to a bride on her wedding day. Love is a very complex emotion, underling. Yes, madam. Well, you can be very close to someone one minute, and the next minute, you can just want to strangle them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? I'm familiar with the urge to strangle, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's just the nature of love. <laughs> love makes lovers for me, love makes lovers right. But here's a fact on which we can depend. I guess what I'm saying here is that 
That number is naive and irresponsibly so. Sorry, I just thought that needed to be said for the benefit of the young people. I want to enter up anyway. Oh, there's a moment coming up that I've become obsessed with. There you are! Oh, shut up! <laughs> Leave while you can. 
Well, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Spare your stock ball, and so it might just be a cynical quip. But it's a wedding after all, and that's exactly what you're thinking when you're standing there at the altar, isn't it? Live or leave. <laughs> but you have to live, because you do love her in some way. It's not an exact science, an arrow doesn't come down from the sky pointing towards the one you're supposed to be with. So one day you say it to someone. You say, I love you. And you basically phrase it as a question, but they accept it as fact. <laughs> and then suddenly there she is standing in front of you in a $3,000 dress with tears in her eyes and her nephew made the hoopla, so what do you do? Do you say, I was kidding, uh, I, I was joking? <laughs> no, you can't. You live, right? You choose to live. And for a couple of months you stare at the alien form in bed beside you and you think to yourself, who are you? Who are you? <laughs> One day, you say it out loud. <laughs> then it's child separation and couples counseling and all your conversations are about her eating disorder and yours will off the picture and you're left constantly redefining and reevaluating and revisiting until you finally lose the deposit on the house and the whole relationship ends on a particularly ugly note with your only copy of Gypsy spinning through the air and smashing against the living room wall. <laughs> but still, in a larger sense, in a broader sense, it's better to have lived and left. Right? Yeah. Well, you can. <laughs> you have no idea how many times I've listened to that. <laughs> oh, chaperone! You certainly have a way with words. Robert? My answer is yes. I will marry you. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> there is. I found a replacement. A new leading lady. Presenting Kitty the Incredible. How you can read my mind. My mind.
everybody stay quiet. This happens occasionally. It's a horrible old apartment with terrible wiring. Just concentrate. Just keep the show alive in your minds. <laughs> Don't talk to anyone. Don't let yourselves be distracted off of the fuse box. Everybody stay quiet. <laughs> I know it's not a perfect show, the spit takes he is lame, the rabbit motif is labored, but none of that matters. It does what a musical is supposed to do. It takes you to another world, and it gives you a little tune to carry with you in your head. A little something for what, when you try to escape the dreary horrors of the real world. Ha <laughs> ha 